Hi guys, it's great to see you today. Uh, I really wish that we were sitting in the common area and reading this together, but I didn't want to let our March Madness of books go by, especially with some really good books coming up. So I'm going to read two to you today. The first one is The Bad Seed, and the second one is The True Story of the Three Little Pigs. So I'll be reading both of these to you today, and then your job is to vote on which one you think is best. Okay? Here we go. The Bad Seed by Jory John. I'm a bad seed. A bad seed. Oh yeah. It's true. The other seeds, they look at me and they say, that seed is so bad. When they think I'm not listening, they mumble, there goes that bad seed. But I can hear them. I have good hearing for a seed. How bad am I? You really want to know? What? Well, I never put things back where they belong. I'm late to everything. I tell long jokes with no punchlines. I never wash my hands. Well, it's not good right now. Or my feet. I lie about pointless stuff. I cut in line every time. I stare at everybody. I glare at everybody. I finish everybody's sentences and I never listen. And I do lots of other bad things too. Know why? Because I'm a bad seed. A bad seed. I just can't help it. Sure, I wasn't always this bad. I was born a humble seed on a simple sunflower in an unremarkable field. I had a big family, seeds everywhere. We found ways of having fun. We were close. But then the petals dropped and our flower drooped. It's kind of a blur. I remember a bag. Everything went dark. And then, then, a giant. I thought I was a goner. I thought I was done for. I screamed and hollered, ah! But I was spit out at the last possible second. I flew through the air and landed under the bleachers with a huge thud. When I woke up, it was dark outside. A wad of gum had softened my fall. I felt okay, but something had changed in me. I'd become a different seed entirely. I'd become a bad seed. A bad seed. That's right. I stopped smiling. I kept to myself and I drifted. I was a friend to nobody and bad to everybody. I was lost on purpose. I lived inside a soda can. I didn't care, and it suited me. Until recently. I've made a big decision. I've decided I don't want to be a bad seed anymore. I'm ready to be happy. It's hard to be good when you're so used to being bad. But I'm trying. I'm taking it one day at a time. Sure, I still forget to listen, and I still show up late, and I still talk during movies, and I do all kinds of other bad stuff. But I also say thank you, and I say please, and I smile, and I hold doors open for people. Not always, but sometimes. And if, even though I still feel bad sometimes, I also feel kind of good. It's sort of a mix. All I can say 
All I can do is keep trying and keep thinking. Maybe I'm not such a bad seed after all. Hey, look, there goes that bad seed. Actually, he's not that bad anymore. I heard that. The end. So that's story one, the bad seed. And later you're going to listen to the story, true story of the three little pigs. And then you need to vote and email me which one you want to move on in the bracket. All right, see you for our next book. On to our next book, The True Story of the Three Little Pigs, as told to John Sheska and illustrated by Lane Smith. Everybody knows the story of the three little pigs, or at least they think they do. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Nobody knows the real story because nobody has ever heard my side of the story. I'm the wolf, Oops. Alexander T. Wolf. You can call me Al. I don't know how this whole big bad wolf thing got started, but it's all wrong. Maybe it's because of our diet. Hey, it's not my fault wolves eat cute little animals like bunnies, sheep, and pigs. That's just the way we are. If cheeseburgers were cute, folks would probably think you were big and bad too. But like I was saying, the whole big bad wolf thing is all wrong. The real story is about a sneeze and a cup of sugar. This is the real story. Way back in Once Upon a Time, time, I was making a birthday cake for my dear old granny. I had a terrible sneezing cold. I ran out of sugar. So I walked down the street to ask my neighbor for a cup of sugar. Now, this neighbor was a pig. And he wasn't too bright either. He had built his whole house out of straw. Can you believe it? I mean, who in his right mind would build a house of straw? So, of course, the minute I knocked on the door, it fell right in. I didn't want to just walk into someone else's house. So I called. Little pig! Little pig! Are you in? No answer. I was just about to go home without the cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. That's when my nose started to itch. I felt the sneeze coming on. Well, I huffed and I snuffed. And you know what? That whole darn straw house fell down. And right in the middle of the pile of straw was the first little pig dead as a doornail. He had been home the whole time. It seems like a shame to leave a perfectly good ham dinner lying there in the straw, so I ate it up. Think of it as a big cheeseburger just lying there. Struggling here a little bit. There we go. I was feeling a little bit better, but I still didn't have my cup of sugar. So I went to the next neighbor's house. This neighbor was the first little pig's brother. He was a little smarter, but not much. He had built his house of sticks. I rang the bell on the stick house. Nobody answered. I called. Mr. Pig, Mr. Pig, are you in? He yelled back. Go away, wolf! You can't come in. I'm shaving the hairs on my chinny-chin-chin. I had just grabbed the doorknob when I felt another sneeze coming on. I huffed, and I snuffed, and I tried to cover my mouth, but I sneezed a great sneeze. And you're not going to believe it, but this guy's house fell down just like his brother's. When the dust cleared, there was the second little pig, dead as a doornail. Wolf's honor.
struggling with the pages on these books. Now, you know food will spoil if you just leave it out in the open. So I did the only thing there was to do. I had dinner again. Think of it as a second helping. I was getting awfully full, but my cold was feeling a little better. And I still didn't have that cup of sugar for my dear old granny's birthday cake. So I went to the next house. This guy was the first and second little pig's brother. He must have been the brains of the family. He had built his house out of bricks. I knocked on the brick house. No answer. I called. Mr. Pig! Mr. Pig, are you in? Get out of here, wolf! Don't bother me again. Talk about impolite. He probably had a whole sack full of sugar, and he wouldn't even give me one little cup for my dear sweet old granny's birthday cake. What a pig! I was just about to go home and maybe make a nice birthday card instead of a cake when I felt my cold coming on. I huffed, and I snuffed, and I sneezed once again. Then the third little pig yelled, and your old granny can sit on a pin. Now, I'm usually pretty calm, but when somebody talks about my granny like that, I go a little crazy. When the cops drove up, of course, I was trying to break down this pig's door, and the whole time I was huffing and puffing and sneezing and making a real scene. The rest, as they say, is history. The news reporters found out about the two pigs I had for dinner. They figured a sick guy going to borrow a cup of sugar didn't sound very exciting. So they jazzed up the whole story with all of that huff and puff and blow your house down. And they made me the big bad wolf. That's it. The real story. I was framed. But maybe you can loan me a cup of sugar? The end. So you have your two books to vote for. The True Story of the Three Little Pigs or The Bad Seed. Make your vote, email me your vote, and I'll let you know next week which book moves on in the bracket. Have a great day. Be kind to your parents. I miss you. We all miss you very, very much. Bye.